Hi there, Andrea and Finley here, my 10 month old puppy who you're gonna hear um, occasionally barking in this video. Yeah, so that's Finley. In this video, you're going to learn about mixing grays using complementary colors and it doesn't matter what those complementary colors are, what hues, what color paints, um, how you can mix them and inevitably get to a very beautiful gray. I hope that you get something from watching this. Grays will add a lot to your color palette. I use them all the time um, for just kind of bringing in beautiful contrast when I'm using them against beautiful bright colors and it brings just a level of subtlety and nuance to your paintings. If you like these videos, go ahead and hit subscribe, but be sure to subscribe to my newsletter at andreawaddell.com slash subscribe. I've got all kinds of really cool things that I'm gonna be launching, um, especially in January. So go ahead and do that and enjoy. With using three primary colors, um, red, blue, and yellow, and we'll see how this works out. I'm not sure it will. This isn't a really a primary here, but it's a red. I'm gonna start by putting some red down here. Then we're gonna put down some blue. This is a cerulean. Let's put some blue right there. It'd be easier if I have a different brush. And some yellow. While I wait for that to dry, why don't I start mixing these colors? So if I do a red and a yellow, we're gonna get an orange. This is, this is a yellow orange. Well, no, that's pretty orange. If I mix, we need some more yellow here. This is a nice cool yellow. So we have a warm yellow. I'm not sure if you can see the difference when we're starting to talk about temperature differences. You can see this is this one's warm and this guy is cool. So I'm working with a cool one. And if we mix our yellow and our blue, we're gonna get a nice green. Let's do that. So this blue is more pigmented than the yellow. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, so it over it's overriding the yellow. So you just sometimes, well, no, not too bad. You have to be gentle when you're not sure which one is more saturated than the other. Okay, so we have a nice green. And if we mix our blue and our red, we're gonna get a nice purple. This is really old paint, but that's okay. Let's see, we're, we might not get a really nice purple, but in theory, we should get something that is purplish. Depending on the reds you use, um, Alizarin red will get us a better purple. This is gonna get a better purple than what I have down here, which is, I think it's, I have just, I use this pay, um, pyrrole red. That's okay. Yeah, this is almost blue. So I need to pull in more red to get it to move towards a purple-ish tint. All right, we're getting closer and we have cool purples and we have warm purples. 
also, like any, any color, the temperature is going to vary. But let's put this down here. Okay, now, while we're waiting for that to dry, let's mix up some grays. So if we want to mix up a gray, I've been asked this so many times in classes, I have been saying again and again that I'm going to do a YouTube video on this, and I have not done it. So guess what? It's happening right now. All right, so if I'm going to mix a gray, I'm going to take two complements. So I could start by taking a red, and I'm afraid I'm not going to have enough pink here, but that's okay. I'm going to take a red and a green. I'm going to get kind of a muddy color. So here's the tricky bit. So if I look at that color, I'm going to give it a test here just to see what it looks like off the gray. That's kind of almost brown. Let me go like this so you can see this better. That is a brown. So now you know. You can get a brown by mixing two complements. It's not always going to be the brown that you want. But if I want that brown to... Wait, I'm going to mix up some more, more paint. Hold on. Okay, so now I have mixed some blue with some orange. And I think you can see this, I'm getting a green. This is gonna be easier to see. So I've used this blue, ceruleum, and this orange, which is a mix of this red and this yellow. And I'm getting this green. So as we're working towards our grays, this is gonna be easier to, to show you. So since this is moving towards green, or it really is green, as I'm working on my gray, I need to tone that green down by pulling in the complement. So the complement is red. I'm going to pull in a little bit, not too much, just a little bit, and mix that in and tone it down and move it towards a gray. It's very green, so I can actually use more red it's really just playing with compliments. You can hear my dog barking in the background. He's very upset. He hates being in the studio. Finley, shut up. Okay, so now I went too far, too, too far. So now you can see I've warmed it up again. I put it down here. Well, actually, no, that's a really nice gray. It's, it's, it's actually tricky mixing grays on a gray palette paper, piece of palette paper, but the way you can really see the color is to bring some white into it. But that's really basically the way I mix beautiful grays, or it's the way I was taught to do that. Pull some white in. So it's always a good idea when you're when you're mixing grays to have some white ready and handy so you can see what's going on. You can see the color more easily. Yeah, that's a beautiful gray. It's a, it's a tiny little bit green, but I think that's beautiful. So that was cerulean blue, the orange, which was my, actually it was a cadmium, cadmium red medium is what I used. This is the red to make the orange mixed. And then when it started to get uh, go a little bit green, then you're pulling in more red. Did I say that right? I'm all confused. Let me say that again. It started with this blue and this orange and it got green. So then we started to pull in the complement of green, which is red. And there we go. Lovely. Okay, let's mix another gray. This time, why don't we take purple, start with our purple. You can see this. Mix my purple, and I will pull in its complement, pull in the yellow.
Painting requires patience when you're mixing up colors and taking your time. I can see already that if I pull this yellow into here, it's, I should do it more slowly is basically what I can see here. So why don't I, mixing grays, you just need to take it a little bit slowly. Yeah, I could tell that was gonna turn really green on me. And really to mix pure color should work with the primaries. Pure primary is not what I've got here, but you can really make grays with any, any mix of complementary colors. Yeah, so this went green again, really green. So I'm gonna pull in more purple instead of bringing in the red right away to see if I can get this down. It's turning into an army green. Let's see that. Let me show you on the white paper. Oh, well, that is kind of gray, but it's still a green. It's, it's, it's for me, it's, it's moving a little bit in the green direction of green. So I'm gonna take a little bit of its complement, red, a little bit. I don't wanna wreck it, cause it's already pretty, it's so funny the way this reads green, army green on my paper palette and it really looks different on the white paper. So in order to see clearly, it's still looking a little green. Warm this up a little bit. A little bit more red. And I wanna see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna pull in some white. That was a lot of white, oh well. Yeah. Nice, beautiful, lovely gray. And this is a, a different one. It looks green, it's so funny. Anyway, if we put it down here next to this one, we have a lovely green, we have a lovely gray. We can lighten that up even more. Put this over here just a little bit and a lot more white. And we've got a nice gray. Very similar to this other one, but subtle nuances. Okay. Let's try a final one. Let's let's mix gray, um, red, and green. Two more compliments. Take my red. You know what? I'm gonna take my red. I'm just gonna throw it over here. Mix this up. I get a brown. Red is a lot more pigmented than blue. I mean than what I've got going here with this blue and this blue-yellow mix. Red is usually very saturated and highly pigmented. So I'm careful. So we'd still, this is where people get stuck when they're making grays, is that inevitably it's gonna veer to some kind of a green. And you might not want that. So I'm gonna show this down. More red. Oh wow, I went heavy on the red. Oh my God, lost my mind there. <laughs> okay, you know what? If I'm doing this, it's actually just because of the angle that I'm trying to show you. Look, then that means if I'm doing this, you're gonna get into this trouble too, but it's a perfect example. So now this has moved really far in the direction of red. I mean, I don't have to take green, it's complement. I could cool that down with blue, for example, but I wanna cool it down. It's gone too far. If I do blue, it might get a little funky, but let's try. Let me show you what could happen. Finley, we don't need to hear you barking. 
Finley, stop that. Stop. I have a puppy. <laughs> I'll show you later. He's really very cute, but he's awfully noisy. He doesn't usually get to come to the studio because, yeah. See, that made it, 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 that's beautiful too. That's a different gray because I, instead of using the compliment, I just did a, a temperature change. We saw that it was getting warm, getting really warm right there. And I put blue in it and we get that instead. Wasn't that kind of pretty? Beautiful, lovely, lovely grays. The mistake that I make often is I don't um, mix up enough paint and uh, then I have to go back and make a whole bunch more. So you, I would encourage you if you're making grays to just make up a lot of paint and then you can, you can keep it overnight. There are ways to, to protect it, put some cellophane or put things on it to keep it nice and moist or you can use um, a wet palette um, where you put some of these shop towels down on a tray, wet it, and then put some saran wrap or some freezer paper over that, which I do not have going on right here, and it keeps it nice and wet for a long time, hours. Okay, let's 